So let's talk about England quickly ahead of Lee Carsley's first game, um, interim manager. But is he going to put his own stamp on his squad, do you think? Yeah, I think he will. Um, I'm told that he's not necessarily a continuity candidate in the sense that uh, of the squad that he'll pick. He, The biggest strength that Lee Carsley has to recommend him for this job is the relationship that he's got with the under-21s. And he won the under-21s Euro title last summer. It was the first time England had won it since 1984. Um, and there are key members of that group who some of them have gone on, Cole Palmer being probably the most obvious one, but um, there's Levi colewill has been called up for the senior side, Jarrett Branthwaite has also been involved. Um, but I think there are one or two others who are probably going to benefit from Lee Carsley being around, whether it's not this time, but next time he's 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 got four fixtures. The FA have sort of stressed he is he is going to be an interim charge, not just for these two games um, coming up. So you're talking about people like Morgan Gibbs White, who was a key part of that under 21 side. Um, he scored the winner at Southampton, obviously at the weekend. Uh, he scored the opening goal in the semi-final win against Israel um, at the under 21 championships. He's a player that, that Carsley likes a lot. I could see him, if he's not in now, being in maybe next month, uh, in October. Noni Madueke is another one. Obviously scored a hat-trick at, um, at Wolves last weekend. Really puts him in the shop window for that. Um, he's he's another who's impressed. He's been sort of in and around the, the under-21 setup for quite a long period of time, but not made that step up when Gareth Southgate was there. And another one I'd, I'd, I'd probably suggest is James Trafford, the goalkeeper. You know, England not only won that tournament, they didn't concede a goal um, in, in all six matches. And he, he was such an important um, member of that squad. He's currently at Burnley, although by the time this comes out, or certainly by the time the window closes, he might end up at Newcastle. They're certainly pushing to sign him. He was part um, of the provisional, the bigger 33-man squad that Southgate called um, up before Euro 2024, but didn't make the cut for the final 26. So I think he's somebody who could be involved. I mean, someone like Curtis Jones is an interesting one. Um, he was man of the match in the final, named in the team of the tournament, but he's not played for Liverpool this season because of a groin problem. But Arna Slot is sort of making positive noises about him being back for the weekend, so he could potentially be available. So, I've, I mean, I've been told that Raheem Sterling is desperate to get back in the England squad, which is part of the reason why he wants out of Chelsea. But clearly, he's not playing at Chelsea, so it'd be very unlikely for him to get in the squad. Marcus Rashford was it in the squad in the last season. That is it, a big one. Do you see a role back for either of those two? And Grealish. Gre- well. Uh, <laughs> I think that what he'll do is he'll he'll look to the younger options that he's got. I don't think we're going to see a radical overhaul, but I don't think that you know he's going to reinvent the wheel here in terms of suddenly saying, well, Ster- what, what, you know, has Raheem Sterling or Marcus Rashford done anything in what is a very formative stage mm-hmm. of the season to suggest that they should be back in the setup? You'd argue no. So I, I, I can't really see it. Grealish, I think, was more of a personal choice from Southgate, so he's possible. But again, he's but not really he, played. He's, they got played. injured before the Community Shield and not really played. Barely so, played, so you can't really see those three being in. Are there any players following the Euros could be the end of the road? Well, Kyle Walker's probably the interesting one. Um, I think he's 34 now. He's, he, he made very positive noises during the tournament about carrying on, although Gareth Southgate's had to talk him into continuing for that tournament and even in Qatar. So, um, you know, while, while Carsley will, will, will want to put his own mark on it and probably bring in one or two of the youngsters, he is going to need some older heads there. I mean, he, he hasn't worked with, with the likes of Declan Rice or Harry Kane, or you, you don't really want to lose all of these kind of experienced players and just fill it with kids. So, you know, there are, there are certainly some decisions to be made there as well, I think. Before we talk about Lee Carsley and, and his prospects of, of getting the role full time, obviously, Lee was, he was a, a strong contender to get the Republic of Ireland job early last last year when uh, I think Stephen Kenny stepped down because Lee was a, a Republic of Ireland international he's got ancestry from uh, I think it was his grandparents so he played I think over 40 games for the Irish now I don't think there's going to be any issue with Lee Carlson going back to Dublin I think you know we know that he, he's, he's born in Birmingham there's a long connection with the England team Declan Rice and Jack Grealish however uh, we do know that so Declan Rice played I think three games full international yep. for Ireland Jack Grealish played under 21 level that I, I've got friends in, in Ireland that I used to work with and they tell me there's a lot of resentment and hostility towards certainly Declan Rice so how do you expect the FA to handle the fact that Declan Rice could be going back to play in Dublin against a team that he used to play for and no longer does well there's not a lot they can do to some extent I mean it will just it's just if he's called up and you assume he will be if he's fit I mean I do think in, in Rice's situation it's it's quite interesting to me that you know where Arsenal have 
recalled Declan Rice, Bukayo Saka. They got them in mm. right at the start of the season, first game straight after the Euros. City sort of said to Walker and Stones, and I know Foden played the second half against Chelsea, but they sort of said to him, "Let you know, come back whenever you can." Rodri's obviously injured, but you know they're thinking about April, not about August. Whereas Arsenal have sort of thought, right, no, we need these guys hit the ground running. Do not give City any kind of head start in the season. And I thought, I think both of them, Rice and Saka, have shown. Um, a bit of fatigue as a result of that understandably he never takes Saka off Arteta and he has taken Saka off in those two games and Rice I think was I remember I just caught Rice's um, just caught caught his image at full time um, because I was at Villa Park last weekend and he was sort of hands on knees blowing out you know cele- sort of celebrating but very much feeling the pace of it it could be a game that he, you know he, tactically he could miss out. You know, does he need the hassle? Yeah. It's a Nations League match. Does it? Is it really that? Well, it will be a hassle. I mean, I think we have to accept that he will be a target of a lot of hostility from the fans. And mm. uh, and is it something that he needs? Is it something England need? You know, it's a game that it's a, it's a Nations League game, but it is a big issue in Ireland that that Ireland produced these players and they are taken away by England. Now, both obviously Declan Rice and Jack Grealish are qualified to play for England. It's fine, no no issue with that. But there's a sense that I think we see it in the game generally now that a lot of players that can play for one country play for the bigger country in the sense that the, the more powerful country and I think that's that's the resentment with, with Rice and Grealish but it's, it, I think it's, it's it's quite a long way in the rear view mirror now because it's happened quite a while ago yeah. there was I know there's was maybe a, a tentative attempt to look at Evan Ferguson's qualifications for England but obviously he's committed to Ireland now but it will be interesting but in terms of in terms of Lee Carsley I think we both know that the FA would ideally like to have a, a coach that's come through the system at St George's Park and is emblematic of their their coaching qualifications, their coaching system. So that's why Carsley, ahead of maybe Graham Potter. And I mean, I hear that Eddie Howe is still a strong contender, but I think maybe seeing what's happening at Newcastle and the four games that Carls is in charge will buy them time to assess the situation at Newcastle. Because although Eddie Howe started the season at Newcastle, they've got a change of regime behind the scenes. And Amanda Stavers left as she was quite close to Eddie Howe in terms of the day to day running. Dan Ashworth left as well, the technical director. So I think Eddie Howe's got a bit of questions to answer in his head as, as to whether he is Newcastle's number one choice as he was under the previous regime. If he becomes available before the, before the end of the year, that would change things with the FA, surely. I don't think if you polled the England fans who were booing Southgate at the Euros and criticising him on social media, if you said to them at the time, well, Lee Carsley will be the replacement, I don't think they, they would have had the same mm. reaction towards Gareth as they did in, in that tournament he's got I think a lot of people to win over externally mm. maybe not so much internally I mean we obviously talk a lot about how Southgate managed the under 21s and, and, and you know it's the same kind of pathway obviously mm. stepped up with the seniors but he's not the first to do that he's how- a strong character Lee Carsley he, he, he will surprise people yeah. media wise and player wise that he can handle himself so I don't think he's a he's not an FA yes man no but I mean you know Howard Wilkinson has followed that path Stuart Pearce has followed that mm. path um, it is it is well trodden, and the FA will argue that if you look at um, Scaloni at Argentina and De La Fuente at Spain, mm-hmm. the, the last two tournament winners, they've effectively followed a similar path. No real senior mm-hmm. major coaching experience, and yet they've been able to deliver on the biggest stages. It was, it was interesting in the, in the summer away with United on, on tour in America that we got to speak to Tom Heaton, who was obviously part of Gareth Southgate's. I don't know, was he part of the staff? He was a, a, a non-playing player, player essentially, yeah. at the, the Euros. And we were speaking to him and he said that he thinks that there's a good chance that those England fans who were booing Southgate may live to regret that or that, that the part that they played in, in Gareth stepping down. Because you talk about, you know, Lee Carsley is obviously qualified in terms of the under twenties and under twenty ones, you've got other under candidates, um, Pochettino or, or Pepin and things. Um, Gareth Southgate created this this team that just habitually Qualified for tournaments and performed well in tournaments, and and it's it, Tom Heaton was of the of the mind that it's entirely possible that in a year's time or or eighteen months that those those same fans who really desperately wanted Gareth out will look back at that era and think was that really the right choice? I mean, well, you, you, I know you covered this in in your piece at the end of the Euros, and I, I was speaking to somebody post Euros, and they they were quite close to people in the England setup, and they were saying in terms of the, the squad of. Just managing the squad, it, it was the worst tournament that they had under Southgate in the sense that it was just the mood was different. Was a, and my sense with Lee Carsley is I don't think we have to worry about what the fans think because they don't they don't pick the team, they don't deal with the guy. I think it's got to be an FA thing, and they, but he's also got to win over the players. And that England squad has got a lot of big time players. 
that have won Premier Leagues, Champions Leagues, played for the biggest clubs in the world, will they accept Lee Carsley? Now that shouldn't even be a, a question, but that is the reality of the game, isn't it? That big players with big egos want well, to control situations. And I think, just, just one more name I'll chuck in there, Frank Lampard, despite his chequered managerial career, would have a better chance of managing some of the bigger egos because of his playing track record than Lee Carsley would. Potentially, I mean, the expectation is very different as well. We were talking about, you know, there's a, there's a. I think, I think the FA would like history to repeat itself mm. here. They, they look back at 2016 and think we Southgate had four games, England started to play well, the players seemed to like him, they, they gave him the gig. It's pretty clear mm. from the statement when Gareth stepped down that they said we have an interim option if we need it. They clearly had this in mind pretty much from the get go. And I think there isn't a clear candidate. You can you can look at you know, you can look at the the options. You mentioned Lampard, but anybody anybody who looked at his club manager Absolutely. level will, will, will record will think mm, I'm not sure. He, he's he really only up gets to it this. because of his because of his playing record that might impress the players in the dressing room. That's that's the only way you give it to Frank Lampard. Yeah, it's uh, you know, Eddie Howe you would say is the the leading English candidate based on what he's done in the Premier League. But he's going to be very hard to get out of Newcastle. Graham Potter's had that mm. had the reputation until he got to Chelsea, and that has really knocked him back. Mm. Then you start looking at the overseas options, and Pochettino obviously now looks like he's going to the USMNT. But having an Argentine managing England was always going to be tricky. Pep Guardiola could the FA really get him? Jurgen Klopp's kind of distanced himself from it, and again, is the whole idea of would it, would would it be acceptable for a German to manage the England national team? That, but I think because there's not a clear candidate, they see they can, and as you rightly say about the pathway at St George's Park, I think they look at someone like Carsley, who's been involved in the setup. I think he joined in 2015, so he's been part of it for nine years. If he can hit the ground running with these with, with with these four matches, and I think significantly, if England are playing good football, because that was the only criticism left of Southgate, wasn't it? Was that the football wasn't great? You know, the performances weren't particularly good, and that's predated the Euros. I mean, they weren't they didn't play well for quite a long time under Southgate. Um, but anybody who watched a, a lot of the under twenty ones, particularly in in their Euros in, in, in last year in twenty twenty three, the football was really good. You know, it was really attacking. It was really dynamic. He managed to squeeze a lot of attacking players in into a setup in the same way that you know the the challenge was asked of Gareth. Can you do that? And and many people felt he didn't do enough, even though they got to the final. It's also a big thing to win a tournament, isn't it? it albeit an under twenty one. Because if you speak to players and people around players, it's becoming more and more apparent that international football is not what is not club football it's it's completely mm. different in the way that you handle players in the way that you organize training in the in the way that you handle camps so i think if, if you if your club hire a manager you can look back at that manager's passing and have a fair idea of how well that manager is going to go at that club i don't think that applies at all it's to international football anymore i think it's a very very specific job and the fact that you've got lee carsley who has, who has gone and albeit with an under 21s has yeah. gone and won a tournament but shown he can handle that and manage that and, and get through it I think probably the FA would, would put more emphasis on something like that than perhaps a club manager who's done more yeah, in they club. Yeah, they will. And it, and it comes back again to Mark's point about buy-in from the players because that's kind of what, that's what you need. You need to understand yeah. tournament football and tournament cycle and you need mm. the buy-in. And if you don't have the buy-in, you're dead. And, and, and my concern was always when Southgate left that the baby could go out with the bathwater here. That we've the, the sort of intangible buy-in, and yes, it was a difficult camp in the summer, but still they got to the final. He, he just about held it together. Is that if you, with those personalities, firstly, and secondly, with the expectation that there is around that England team, because whoever manages that team going into 2026 is going to be expected to win the Absolutely. World Cup. There's no two ways about it. With the, the individual talent that England have got, that will be the benchmark that they are aiming for. You, you you will not win that tournament if you don't have the buy-in from the players. You might not be a tactical genius. You might not have to be. But if the players are invested in it and you've got that tournament understanding, then maybe you've got half a chance. I think the problem with, with these next four games is it's, it's, it's Republic of Ireland, Greece and Finland. It, can you give somebody the job on the base of what they do in those games? Well, it's lose-lose, isn't it? You're yeah, winning, you're meant it, to, you're losing. Like, it's, but it's you're... also like... I'm going to get criticised for this, but it's the level of performance. It's almost like judging the kind of pre-season friendly because these aren't the elite of the game. England will be expected to win these games quite comfortably. They're not playing Italy, Germany, Spain, France. They're playing teams that they tend to always beat. So how can you measure Lee Carsley's readiness or 
suitability for the job against that sort of well, level of opponent. And and it comes at a bad time of the year, really, when you think about the domestic calendar. You mm. know, when you think about the, the expanded Champions League, the, the extra demands there, the fact that a lot of the players have not really had a proper break. Uh, the Premier League is more intense mm. than it's ever been. If the, the the demands on these players to then say, oh, there's a Nations League game. There's also two more breaks between now and Christmas. So mm. Essentially, you could say, I'm gonna I'm gonna miss this one, but I'm I'm back in for mm. October or or November. So it's not like I'm gonna be out of this camp and I'm not gonna see international football for six months because we don't play against March. And it, that comes back to I think to where we started, which is why I think he will go for n- not sort of you know manifestly dominant, but I think he will go for a lot of youngsters because. They they know he knows they know him he knows them. You, I remember Harvey Eller I think was describing him as sort of an unbelievable manager. Anthony Gordon I think he said he's one of the best man managers he's ever had. You know they 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 really love him. You know there's a real kind of connection that he's got with them there. And I think he's going to need a, a nucleus of those players in this new squad to sort of say to them maybe even to the more senior guys. Well look. This is the kind of connection we can generate, but you've got to you've got to come with me on the journey and not be half in or half out because you know that's the that's the road to failure. Well, the World Cup qualifiers don't start until I think next March, so the FA have got plenty of time. But I think my hunch, not about yours, is that Lee Carls is going to be going to the United States as England manager. That he's the he's the bookie's favourite for a reason. It's his to lose, isn't it? Let's be honest. Um, it's his to lose if England play well in these four games. And as I say, I really think the style of football is key because that's the only thing that the fans could complain about under Southgate. The, the, the record was ridiculous. It was unprecedented in England's history. Their consistency in in, in tournament football. No manager, uh, whoever succeeds him, obviously is going to get to test that for another two years. So the only thing you can really judge him on is: is it fun, and are the players enjoying it, and are they buying into it? And if they do, then it's his it's his job. Well, that's part of the problem with international football, isn't it? That you're talking about creating a defined style of play that fans can look at and go, "That's your your style of play in a camp that's going to last a couple of days and and two games." I mean, it's incredibly managing international teams. I think is incredibly difficult. I think it's people underestimate how tough a gig. That is, uh, and I think maybe, as I said before, that Heaton said in the summer that people are going to maybe regret the way that, that Southgate, in a sense, was, was hounded out a little bit because I don't think the way that he managed it and the results that he had, the way that, that he managed those, those big players was normal. 